very warm welcome to this wonderful celebration that is all things Bristol Neuroscience. We wanted to do a festival for the public uh, which highlights uh, the best of the research that, that goes on here in Bristol. We are having a whole range of activities from talks from the specialists. And caffeine is a very good um, demonstration of that distinction between dependence and addiction. We don't see with our eyes, we actually see with our brain. And what I'd really love to do is to understand how their nervous systems work to allow them to behave as whole animals. And this is somebody's finger with these sensory fibres that are detecting the danger and relaying it to the spinal cord. And the RVM seems to be the sort of key gatekeeper as to whether pain signals are allowed to come into the spinal cord and then pass up to the brain. So we brought at Bristol's Boggling Brain Show. It's designed to be a very basic introduction to the human brain and to really inspire people to be interested to find out more about their own brain. I think um, having an event on this scale really adds a kind of uh, a big sense of purpose and it's really valuable for members of the public to understand the wealth of research that's happening here in the city of Bristol. Last but not least, also a um, exhibition of all the beautiful imagery that is created as a result of neuroscience work, so a science art exhibition. One of the key aims of research ultimately is of course to be able to describe to the general public uh, the type of work that you have done. And given that most of the research that is carried out is publicly funded, it is a, indeed a responsibility that we actually have such public events. We're going to this evening have as our keynote speaker, uh, Professor David Nutt, I came to Bristol in 1988 because it had this tremendous track record in neuroscience. Since I've been here, that's grown, and I'm, I'm proud to be able to say that I was one of the people that helped set up the integrated concept of Bristol Mass Neuroscience, and it's lovely to be here celebrating its 10th anniversary. The scientists have to engage with the public. The public pay our salaries through taxation. Uh, we have to explain to them what we're doing, but more than that, we have to get them engage with our needs because in the end you know we, we are dependent on what they, what they what they say and what they invest in us so I, I'm totally committed to public engagement always have love doing it and there's almost no scientist of the 650 people in Parliament in fact I only know one and, and, and I think we have to change that we should be investing more in science because science eventually will get us into a whole a new arena of economic growth uh, but it will also do more. I mean, brain science will also help us deal with many of the really pervasive problems we have in the world today. It's problems such as addiction, such as depression, such as other forms of mental illness, such as neuroinflammation, what else goes in. These are all problems which neuroscience could actually put an end to, theoretically, or at least massively reduce. Get in there, do experiments, think, and ask lots of questions. And don't ever take an answer, accept an answer that you know is not, you know, is not right.